Welcome to a Legendarium special about Heron of Alexandria, the wonder worker of Roman Egypt. In this episode, we will talk about the ancient mathematician who also helped to create the robotic age. Heron of Alexandria was born around the year 10 AD, during the first generation of Roman rule in the ancient kingdom of Egypt. As a boy, he spent most of his time at the University of Alexandria, which once housed the legendary Library of Alexandria. Very little is known about Heron's family, though given that they could invest in his education, they must have had some money. After long and rigorous study in the library, Heron became a teacher who delivered lectures in physics, pneumatics, and mathematics. In time, he found a place among the great circle of ancient scientists who gathered in Alexandria. His reputation today rests upon his discovery for the area of a triangle, yet in his three known works, he calculated the area and volume of bodies like pyramids, cones, and cylinders. His mathematics focused on practical uses, such as determining the seating capacity of a stadium or how many jars could be stored on a ship. And in his own time and our time, Heron became most famous for the early robotics he created. Cybernetics, originally spelled in the Greek form cybernetike, would not be recognized as a field of study until the 20th century. Inventor Percival Everett is credited with inventing the first modern vending machine in 1883, yet Heron was credited with inventing the same thing almost 1800 years earlier. In his time, temples competed with one another for worshippers, and they could draw more people by offering them better services, just like a restaurant today. Patrons wanted to enter a temple as neat and clean as they could, so Alexandrian priests helped Heron to invent the first vending machine which dispensed soap and water. His inventions only accepted coins and had a slot for worshippers to insert them into. It fell into a tray connected to a lever, and the weight of the coin opened a valve which allowed holy water to flow from a spigot. Water flowed until the coin slid off the tray and, with the aid of a counterweight, the lever snapped back into place. The water flow stopped ready for the next worshipper seeking divine favor at the cost of one coin. Heron used many methods to power his machines, from fire to counterweights and steam to water power. He also used one of the simplest sources of free energy available to humankind, the wind. With it, he created a wind-powered organ powered by a small wind wheel, which powered a piston and forced air through organ pipes. These made sounds and tweets, like the sound of a flute. However, Heron's most famous invention became his alien file, a device which showed how to unlock the power of steam centuries before the steam engine. The alia file included a copper stand resting upon a boiler, with two pipes resting perpendicularly from the surface. These both bent inwards by 90 degrees, acting as an axis for a pivoting sphere with two oppositely bent nozzles protruding from the surface. As the water in the boiler gave off steam, this made its way into the sphere and ejected from the nozzles at high speed, causing the sphere to rotate. And this helped pave the way for another invention, the temple door opener. Heron used heat and pneumatics to open a set of temple doors. The priest lit a fire on the altar, heating the air within, causing it to expand. The expansion forced water out of the sphere and into the bucket, which moved downwards under the extra weight. The bucket connected to a rope coiled around a spindle, and, as the bucket moved down, the spindle revolved, making the doors open. 
Once the fire died down, the air contracted, and to avoid leaving a vacuum, the water siphoned from the bucket back into the sphere, causing the bucket to rise with the aid of a counterweight. As a result, the doors swung shut not long after the worshippers entered. There can be no doubt that people entering the temple upon seeing the great doors move seemingly on their own power believed themselves in the presence of magic makers and gods. In 60 AD, Heron built a cart with a rope wrapped around two independent axles with a falling weight to provide power. Using pegs sticking from the axle, Heron could control how tightly the rope wound around the axle. This allowed his cart to change direction and move on a pre-programmed course. This primitive mechanism is not different from punch carts, which operated on the same principle more than 1900 years later. Later, Heron expanded upon this first robot to orchestrate a 10-minute play with almost no human involvement. Instead, he used ropes, cylindrical axles, nuts, and simple machines behind the stage. His spectacle became so enchanting because people in ancient times did not know how his theatrical tricks worked, and they loved trying to figure out how he pulled it off. In truth, Heron created it through simple tricks like dropping metal balls onto a sheet of metal to resemble the sound of thunder, supposedly made by the lightning bolts of an angry Jupiter. Heron also invented a pneumatic machine fittingly known as Heron's Fountain. It shows the principles of pneumatics and hydraulics, so it is often used in physics classes for demonstrations to this day. The fountain held two reservoirs, one filled with water. As water poured into the upper tray, it flowed down into the first reservoir, where it compressed the air. This compressed air forced into the second reservoir, where it pushed the water out and created a powerful jet. This device operated until the bottom reservoir filled with water when it had to be reset. Heron's fountain likely informed the invention of the syringe, though the ancient syringe would have been a larger and more unwieldy instrument used to give enemas or force liquid down the throat. Though we don't know much about his life, we know much of his works. We don't know if he married or if he had children, only that... He died sometime around the year 70 AD, which meant a long life by the standards of the time. That is fortunate, for he had much to share with the world. Yet Heron also wrote about a fire engine and a rapid-fire crossbow. As is the case with Archimedes, we can never know for certain if he built these devices, but who knows what he could have done with more time. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.